Greetings friends, it is I, Eurogamer's Ian Higton, coming to you once again from the safety of my VR corner. Now, a lot has been said about the PSVR 2's disappointing lack of backwards compatibility in regards to PSVR 1 games. As an owner of a big PSVR 1 library myself, I felt just as let down as the rest of you when the news broke, but I do understand why, globally, it's not possible for Sony to implement back compat across the board as the control schemes for a lot of the PSVR 1 games are just so different to what the PSVR 2 has to offer. For instance, you've got games like Moss that rely on light bar tracking from a single DualShock 4 as the control scheme, and then stuff like Blood and Truth that uses dual move controllers that are also tracked via a light bar which the PlayStation VR 2 doesn't have or need. When the difference in controller tech between games and headset generations is so great, it does make sense for Sony to leave PSVR 1 to PSVR 2 upgrades up to individual developer discretion, but that obviously leaves us with more questions. Which developers are actually going to take the time to do this? How many backwards compatible games are going to be available on or near console launch? And most importantly, how much are these upgrades going to cost us, the people who have already invested in a bunch of PSVR 1 games and are just about to spend a fortune on a PSVR 2? Well, that's where this week's episode of Ian's VR Corner comes into play, because I've been keeping an eye out, and so far I've spotted 10 PSVR 1 to PSVR 2 upgrades that have been officially confirmed by their developers, and I'll be listing them off in a sec. But first, I should point out that not all of these confirmed upgrades have been confirmed to be free. So far, six of them have been, and I'm hoping we'll get confirmation for the rest of them soon. But as it stands at the time of recording this, I've divided this list of PSVR 1 to PSVR 2 upgrades into confirmed free and then unconfirmed free, starting with the freebies first. Just like Left 4 Dead, the game that has so obviously inspired it, After the Fall was designed with four-player co-op in mind, and it's this focus on multiplayer that really made the game shine on PSVR 1. If you've played After the Fall already, you'll know that shooting the White Walker-esque Snowbreed feels great, especially when you're dual-wielding pistols. And that's about to improve when After the Fall's developers, Vertigo Games, launch the PSVR 2 version of the game sometime next year. As mentioned in the recent PlayStation blog post, Vertigo Games has really taken advantage of the new PSVR 2 features. Adaptive gun haptics offered by the PSVR 2 Sense controllers will add a new level of immersion to the gunplay, and allegedly, every slide you rack and magazine you release can now be felt throughout your entire hands, while each gun now mimics its real-life counterpart in trigger pull weight with the dynamic use of the adaptive triggers. It's not just the controllers that will give you a nice little immersive rumble though, you'll also feel the vibrations of the Smasher as it storms towards you and the hits of the Snowbreed as they attack you through the PSVR 2's headset feedback. Plus, the already highly detailed environments from the original PSVR version will be bolstered by the 4K HDR display and the new 110 degrees field of view. Since launching just under a year ago, the game's content has almost doubled, and the owners of the PSVR version will be very pleased to know that Vertigo has confirmed that there will be a free PSVR 2 upgrade for players who already own After the Fall on PSVR 1. One genre that's been massively overlooked in the world of VR so far is the MMO, but the ambitious open-world RPG Zenith The Last City has taken great strides in filling that gap. It's heavily inspired by Sword Art Online, and there's also a bit of Breath of the Wild in there too, and you can use full motion controls to climb and fly around its huge open world, when you're not using those motion controls to physically defeat your enemies, that is. Despite being pretty sparse on content at launch, Zenith The Last City was surprisingly popular on the PSVR, and the newly announced PSVR 2 edition promises to be a much bigger game than before. 
bringing with it hundreds of hours of new content and big graphical updates like crisper textures, high definition models, lifelike grass, realistic shadows, lighting and more. According to the recent PlayStation blog post, you'll be able to experience a whole new dimension of interaction with the adaptive triggers of the Sense controllers, and be able to feel the energy surge through your hands when powering up your swords, or the resistance of your triggers when firing your blasters. Haptics in both the controllers and the headset will also allow you to feel the clash of an enemy blade, the swiftness of a dash, or the slow pulse of a dangerously low health bar. Best of all, though, is that that blog post also confirmed that the PSVR 2 version will be a free download to all players who already own the game on the original PSVR. Beat Saber is a fantastic game, and it's a classic VR title because it's easy to pick up and play, and it instantly makes you feel like a badass Jedi. Some might say it's the perfect VR game, but in my opinion, Pistol Whip here gives it a good run for its money. Which is good, because due to Beat Saber now being an Oculus-owned game, there is a possibility that it might never come to PSVR 2. Thankfully, Pistol Whip follows a very similar formula, and this stylish rhythm action game is easy for anyone to pick up and play, regardless of their VR skills, because it instantly makes you feel like you're John Wick kicking ass inside of a nightclub that's located in the Matrix. Once again, news of the PSVR 2 version of Pistol Whip on the PlayStation blog tells of an enhanced version of the game that will introduce more depth and dimension to the action, with headset and controller haptic feedback, finger touch detection and boosted loading speeds. Thanks to this, every weapon will now have its own feedback for firing and reloading, plus the sensor's adaptive triggers will provide different levels of resistance when the clip is empty or full. What I really love the idea of, though, is the way the headset haptics will allow you to feel the rush of a bullet grazing your head as it flies past you, whilst built-in 3D dynamic positioning means that the headset will track where every sound effect is relative to the player, and it will then adjust the volume automatically. And of course, once again, the PlayStation VR 2 version will be a free upgrade to anyone who owns the original PSVR version, which is very nice indeed. The Light Brigade is a bit of an anomaly on this list, as it's the only game in the confirmed free section that's not actually out yet. The Light Brigade does look very interesting though, as it's described as a single-player roguelike experience filled with immersive gunplay and moody mystery. In the game, we'll be forced to strategically navigate through dense forests, frozen mountains and forgotten graveyards, and these procedurally generated battlegrounds will be filled with enemies lurking around every corner. This experience will be further enhanced by realistic physics-based gunplay, which in turn is supposed to create tense, heart-pounding shootouts that will evolve as you unlock new firearms and also unique spells. But if the game isn't out yet, how does this free PSVR 2 upgrade work, you might be wondering? Well, The Light Brigade will actually be a cross-buy title for PlayStation VR 2 and PlayStation VR, so if you're desperate to play this game but can't afford a PSVR 2 just yet, then you can buy it on the PSVR 1 when it releases and then upgrade for free whenever is convenient for you. VR Guy Deluxe, which wisely changed its name a little while back, is a hilarious single-player first-person puzzle game where players have to find their way out of the dreams of the titular The Guy using objects and tools that they'll obtain during The Guy's immersive snoozes. The PSVR 2 version of The Guy VR Deluxe was announced by the game's developer in a Reddit post a month or so ago, and while we don't know what extras the upgrade may bring in terms of haptics and visuals, etc, etc, thanks to a question from a curious commenter, we do know that the developer is hoping to release this as a free upgrade for owners of the original game. 
which is basically as close to a confirmation of a free upgrade as we can get for this one at the moment. <laughs> OK, we're on to the unconfirmed free upgrade section now, and I'm kicking this one off with No Man's Sky here. Now, we know that No Man's Sky is definitely coming to the PSVR 2, thanks to a PlayStation blog post from back in June, where Sean Murray, the founder of Hello Games, stated, The power of PlayStation 5, coupled with the all-new PlayStation VR 2 hardware, including the new Sense controllers, combined to take the sense of immersion and believability up by several major notches. That was obviously exciting news for No Man's Sky fans because the PSVR 1 version running on PS5 was already pretty darn awesome, but what Sean's blog post did not mention was anything about there being a free PSVR 2 upgrade. Well, fear not friends, because just this week, this trailer for the free No Man's Sky PSVR 2 update was published on the PlayStation Store. So not only can you see some of the gorgeous new visuals that you'll be able to witness through that 4K headset, but the blurb at the end also confirms this update as a February 2023 release, so I'm presuming that this will probably mean that it's going to be a launch day update for the PlayStation VR 2. OK, we're on to the unconfirmed free upgrade section now, and I'm kicking it off with Swordsman VR, which is probably the newest PSVR 2 announcement on this list. Not only that, but it's something like the fourth or fifth game to be confirmed to be playable on the PSVR 2 on the day of launch. Swordsman VR is a story-driven, physics-based medieval combat game that's rated incredibly highly in most people's best PSVR game lists. Which makes it seem weird that I've never actually played this one before, but somehow I completely missed it. Maybe PSVR 2 will be my time to shine though, because there looks to be a massive game here to try out, with seven different thematic environments against four different cultures, zombies and five different bosses, there's dozens of weapons to wield, shields, armour and skills for you to customise, and even telekinesis and chronokesis powers that let you manipulate in-game objects and time itself. We don't know much in terms of what improvements the PSVR 1 to PSVR 2 upgrade will bring to the game, but we do know, thanks to this tweet to developers Sin Studio and their reply, that news of whether or not the update will be free is due before the end of this year. Here's hoping that the little smiley face at the end of this tweet means that it's happy news for the owners of the game and not for the developer's wallet. Just like The Light Brigade, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution isn't out yet, but it is due out this December on the Quest 2, with the PSVR and PSVR 2 versions landing at some point in 2023. There's no hints as to whether it'll be a launch title for the PSVR 2 yet, but having played a demo of the game on Sony's new headset, it did seem pretty polished and almost ready to go to me. I actually cannot wait to jump back into the story of the tourist and discover more of New Orleans' secrets, all whilst stabbing multiple zombies and probably a fair few humans as well in the head with a massive knife. And while I can safely say that it doesn't really change the formula too much, Chapter 2 does add a whole load of new weapons to play with and some really pretty new locations to stealth your way through as well, which will look extra gorgeous through the PSVR 2's 4K headset. So while I can confirm that this game plays great on the PSVR 2, taking special advantage of the Sense controllers especially, what I can't confirm so far is whether this game, like the Light Brigade, will offer players a free upgrade to the PSVR 2 version if they buy the PSVR 1 version first. Here's hoping the game's developers end up being saints rather than sinners in this respect.
If you own a PSVR and love Beat Saber, there's a high chance that you may already have Synth Riders in your collection, as this freestyle dancing VR rhythm game has been incredibly popular on the platform. Again, there's not a huge amount known about the PSVR 2 upgrade for this game, other than this Reddit post from the developer over two years ago that has confirmed it's in development. But you can probably expect the PSVR 2's controller and headset haptics to come into play as you catch notes, ride rails, and dodge the obstacles in Synth Rider's many levels. With a PSVR 2 version of the game on the way at some point, it stands to reason that the developers would offer it as a free upgrade. But so far there's been no official word either way, and that's why it's sitting here in the unconfirmed section. When I streamed the original PSVR version of Alvo, I wondered out loud if it would be the PSVR's answer to Call of Duty, and after having played it, as far as I was concerned, it was. The fast-paced, COD-like PvP modes were incredibly fun to run and gun my way through. It was easy to pick up and get into, and really, the only downside to the game was the fact that the lobbies dried up pretty soon after release. The PSVR 2 version of Alvo was confirmed by Upload VR back in June, but once again details on what that version might include in terms of PSVR 2 tech improvements are pretty much non-existent at the moment. If it ends up being a better looking port of the Quest 2 version that added new maps, a co-op zombie mode and cross-play lobbies, we'll all be in for a treat when this one eventually comes out. But one thing Upload VR couldn't confirm with Alvo's developer was whether or not the PSVR 2 version will come as a free upgrade. So here's hoping it will. And once again, that is all the PSVR 2 news I have for you all right now. I'm keeping a close eye on all the comings and goings around the PSVR 2 and its potential library of games, so do like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to Eurogamer for almost daily videos about video games and Ian's VR Corner episodes every Sunday, and do check out these other videos that are on screen and clickable right now if you want to continue your journey of discovery into the potential of the PSVR 2. Goodbye!